Okay, let's call to order, everyone, since we're running a few minutes late. 702, are we all set? Yep. Okay, could we do a Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance, right behind you. Thank you. Order the left corner, you get the option. Right you can here. go that one there if you want. Thank you. I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mary Ann, Ms. Nardi, would you take the roll, please? Here. Here. Okay. A quorum being present, the first order of business is to hold a public hearing on the budget prepared in tentative form as set forth in the minutes of the meeting of the Board of Education held on June 8th, 2021. The Secretary of the Board of Education has submitted the affidavit and certificate of publication from the landmark newspaper stating that a tentative budget for District 208 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022 was placed on file and was conveniently available at the district's administrative offices. Notice was given that a public hearing on said tentative budget will be held at 7 o'clock p.m. on September 14, 2021. Due notice has been given of the public hearing on the budget and all other statutory requirements preliminary to the holding of such public hearing have been fulfilled. Dr. Skinkis and Dr. Smetana will present and explain the 2021-22 budget and answer any questions from the board. Thank you, President uh, Zalis. Uh, Dr. Smetana and myself have uh, worked on this budget since May with the Finance Advisory Council. The school board has seen it June, July, and August. Uh, we did one additional finance advisory meeting uh, near the end of August uh, just to make sure uh, some final changes were made and adjusted. And Ms. Matana will go through uh, some, some of the significant areas or point, uh, highlight the key points of uh, the FY22 budget. Page seven. Uh, we will uh, begin with uh, going over some of the major uh, assumptions, both for revenue and for expenditure. Um, but overall, the final budget for fiscal year 22 is uh, showing a projected surplus of $694,000. Um, so, looking on the revenue side, at, um, board book page seven, some of the bigger items that I wanted to call your attention to are real estate taxes. Uh, last year we budgeted at 97%. This year we'll be budgeting at 99% as we typically do to include not only this year's collection but as well as recovering some of that property tax from last fiscal year uh, that we did not receive. Um, Evidence-based funding, there was talk about this earlier um, a couple months ago and so the state increased the allocation. We will receive an additional $135,000. Uh, this year. Uh, ESSER funds, which we've talked about a lot, um, we did receive a little over a uh, million dollars. We will. It's a reimbursement grant. Um, as you can see, for this fiscal year, I budgeted $1,064,180 to include ESSER two payments um, for things that we spent last fiscal year, as well as a majority of, of the funds from this fiscal year. Um, I increased the revenue for special education room and board um, by 80000 um, based upon the fiscal year 21 expenditures. Uh, we get, always get reimbursed a year later. And then um, revenue uh, was increased for CPPRT by 200,000 uh, based off of fiscal year 21 actuals, as well as the estimate that was released in August for fiscal year uh, 22. Um, on the next page. Chris, uh, before we leave this page, although that million, obviously our, we have a $600,000 surplus, but it was, I mean, the, the ability to almost receive 1.1 million. Yes, we would uh, not have had a surplus had it not been for the ESSER funds, correct. Okay, and that's a one-time payment. That is a one-time payment, correct. So it's not like we're gonna have that million again next year. Correct. Okay. And basically that, for anybody who doesn't know what ESSER is, that's the COVID money, right? Yes, correct. Um, moving on to expenditures, there are just a few that I'd like to highlight. Um, the first line, certified staffing costs, that's always our, our biggest expenditure. Um, as you can see, it includes the uh, 3.8 average raises that are in the contract. However, due to the five retirements from last year, the overall increase uh, to salaries, certified salaries is almost flat. Um, special education costs have increased from the last time 
Uh, you may have looked at the tentative budget. However, they remain almost flat uh, for this year due to the changes in services um, for some students as well as um, some students graduated. We had fewer freshmen come in um, this year. And then not on the summary page, but also um, since the last tentative budget, we increased transportation expenditure by 25,000 uh, for athletics due to the bus driver shortage and they need to be able to still uh, be creative and find some ways to transport our students to athletic events. And we're using everything from rental companies and charter buses, anything we can find, correct? Correct, so that's whatever we, we have up. to do to piece it together. Just to not the snow plow. Just <laughs> not the snow plow. And get the students there. Mm -hmm. And before we leave this page, uh, 75 to 80% of our budget is uh, salary and benefits, correct? Correct, that is, um, reflected on uh, a few pages later in a, in a okay. chart, but yes. ESSER 3 is on page 9. I know you went through that um, uh, at the hearing in August, but the big things again, um, an extra psych, 1.4 additional FTE, uh, the ALOP program, which we sent out to the board today, uh, but they having two additional at-risk, uh, you know, two additional at-risk people to or employees from the ALOP program to help our most at-risk population. Uh, so that's how we're, I mean, those are three big things that we purchased out of the additional million dollars. Correct. An I extra also, school psych. Correct. I would also add wrap services uh, for general education uh, students, which provide opportunities for us to partner with families outside of um, the school to address any issues that may be preventing success at school, um, but issues that students face at home as well. Um, on the next page, um, board book page 10 is the summary page. On this page, you'll see the summary of revenue and expenditures for each fund. Um, but on the bottom, which is probably the more interesting part, you'll see the operating fund balance as a percent of expenditures. Uh, we always report two numbers. Uh, the first number includes the $2.9 million in working cash that we have reserved for land acquisition or development. And the other with that removed since uh, that money is earmarked for that purpose. So looking at the um, overall fund balance with that uh, money removed, at the end of this fiscal year, uh, the district will have a fund balance uh, of 54.45%, which means that the district, if we received no additional revenue, we would be able to operate for 54.45% of a year or about six and a half months. Um, this fund balance is really helpful because once again, the county has pushed back the collection of property taxes so normally we would receive a big payment in August of anywhere from like six to seven million dollars in revenue. Um, and we have not received that this year um, since the deadline has been pushed back to October 1st. So the fund balance provides us with the ability to continue to function to pay our bills while we haven't um, been receiving any revenue. And to reiterate, the state and the county continue to be behind on all of their payments, correct? Correct. correct. Page uh, 11 of board book is the analysis I think you were referencing, Ramona, in regards to percentage. Uh, it breaks down our revenue analysis as long as our expenditure analysis, and then a general education expenditure analysis. Correct. Are there any uh, additional questions on the budget? I want to look, to look to my left and right. Any board members have questions? We obviously have had a hearing on this. I want to ask that the student advisor, this is your first foray to the budget. Do you have any questions or comments? Um, just like a general one. So if we have that money left over, does that just carry into the next year? Yeah, so it's like a, the, each individual fund is kind of like the, its own checking account. And then the working cash is what we, we refer to kind of as the savings account. Yeah, so it's not a zero-based budgeting. It is, it is fund-based, so that's why that, um, the slide that Dr. Smetana was referring to with the fund balance becomes such an important piece of the discussion so that we can f handle operations without state or federal funding coming in in, in the event that happens. Right, because like when you're at home, you have a paycheck coming in twice a month, but here we don't have, we still have to pay teachers, which is the most part of our budget but we don't always have money coming in on a regular basis from property taxes, which is the majority of where the money comes from. Our paycheck right? comes in twice a year. Okay. And so in between those two payments from the county and the state money, 
we use this fund balance to like carry us through the months, like a credit system. So I just want to emphasize, and I know um, Dr. Skinkis and Smetana referenced this already, but the, the, the ESSER funds are obviously been our, our lifeline this year. We were looking at a very different budget projection just a mere six months ago. So thank you very much for following the grant rules and, and understanding how to best use that money for the betterment of, of the district and the students. Um, you know, additional staff, 1.4 FTE, an additional school psychologist, the ALAP program, the RAP services, all of those that we've seen now in that slide and from your presentation, those are meaningful and really help support what we've been talking about here at the board level, which is returning students to learn and returning them to the classroom. So thank you very much. Um, but I do want to emphasize it's part of the congressional allocation of funds. It's not part of the property tax money or any of the other regular funding sources. So it is definitely sun sunsetted. Is that the correct word? Sunsetted? Okay. There's a sunset for sure. There is a sunset. Thank you. Um, so any questions or comments from the board? Looking around. Do we have any public comment here that wishes to speak on the budget? No? Okay. Do you have any concluding remarks, or is that okay? good? Chris, any good? Mm -hmm. Okay, seeing no further comments, um, we're going to declare the public hearing on the budget completed. So we're going to adjourn this. Um, we're going to adjourn the public hearing. We have a motion. I make a motion that we adjourn the public hearing for the uh, the. I'm sorry, on the budget for the fiscal year beginning July 2021. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Ms. Gasper. Mm -hmm. you know, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now we're going to move on to the regular meeting. Now keep me on track here in case I move out. Um, do we have any visitor statements for the regular meeting? I don't think we do. I am looking around in case we do. And discussion information items, Dr. Skinkis, can you start us on FOIA? FOIA requests we had four. One from the landmark in regards to copies of the application. Erica Gutierrez, CT Mechanical, current HVAC contract. Uh, Sherry Reed from Smart Procure. We kind of get, get one of those every two years or so, uh, every purchase orders. And then Lindsay Morrison in regards to applications for the vacant board spot uh, in August. Any questions on the FOIAs? Yeah. Uh, district goal setting, I wanted to bring this up. I shared with the board, um, the, the administration had compiled the last five years of district goals. I know it's an agenda item that we will need to spend some time on. Um, I want to put it out there right now for my colleagues. Is there any suggestion or preference as to how we proceed? I would like to see us have a special meeting to start that, to kickstart that, and not try to do it in a regular meeting, because I think it'll be a robust uh, conversation as we like kind of identify the bigger goals. And I don't think we'd get it done in one meeting, but I think we'd probably have to drill down not only would I like a special meeting, but I would also put out there, maybe we might want to reach out and invite um, somebody from ISAB, you know, to come and help with a little instruction, or if, if we don't, that we would just designate, you know, some time to do that. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree, it's not gonna, I think, I mean, you've, you've been through this before and we've all done um, this exercise in our, in our professional lives. It certainly is not going to be able to be crammed into our regular meeting schedule. Um, would you be able to come up with a draft agenda of what that meeting would look like, though? Because I guess I don't want us all just to convene and then be spinning our wheels any, any further. So I think it, it, my thought was review the material we have and set a some kind of, type of a, a template of, of how we move through the various areas. Is that something you're comfortable doing? or? Do you want me to take a stab at it? Well, I don't think we could set that today from the materials that you gave. No. Because I, I don't think they're, it's a complete set. No. Yeah, I, I think you know there's still more that we can gather. Um, Do, is this something we'd be considering doing after November 19th when there's been a chance to attend a workshop, or is this something we're considering much sooner? I don't think any of us got into a workshop, unfortunately. The workshop was... Oh, that's yes. right. We're that's right. We're, 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 we're Well, and my question is, yeah. um, I guess we were... You had brought up the IASB, bringing them in to do a uh, potential discussion with us as a, right. as a board mm -hmm. to set some uh, sort of agenda or something like that, so... Mm -hmm. um, but because no one was in there, that makes sense right. that we would no, I, do I it guess, on our own schedule. 
I wanted to make sure that we didn't drop this from our agenda and that sure. we kind of uh, set a time frame for moving forward and convening us on a Saturday or an early meeting or whatever we're going to end up doing without knowing what we want to tackle at that meeting is, is not going to be a good use of any of our time. Correct. Yeah, I have the notes from that workshop from several years ago, which I'll copy and I'll get to you so you can disseminate. I have another flyer that I wanted to bring to you tonight. It's on Educational Goals of the United States from John Goodland, an educator that kind of matches. I'll give that to you to add okay. to the pool of things that sure. you've disseminated. But I think probably a good start of the meeting would be if we get somebody who comes in and normally tutors, doesn't have to be from the Illinois Association of School Boards. There's many, Nikki could recommend somebody, but they give you some kind of guidance and what to look for in setting your goals. Not to drill down so deep, you know, to find that balance between um, how deep in the details you want to go and not, make sure that you find things that are measurable, things that match with your mission state, all of the above. And then I think a win would be to come out of like a morning, a couple hours with maybe some, your six, five, five to seven big goal areas. Mm -hmm. And then you could kind of move on and drill down on some of those. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, I, I agree on all fronts. That's kind of, I think, how we've been talking about it. I just yeah. don't want, um, I mean, I think we all need to acknowledge it's going to take a certain amount of time and effort and kind right. of independent reading, right? It's not going to, right. it's not going to be resolved in a two-hour session or here in a 10-minute discussion. Right. So um, maybe here's what I would suggest. Laura has some information. Other people have other um, insights and input as to how to proceed over the next, let's say, before the next meeting, send me what you have or what okay. you think would be some thoughts on structuring this process, and I can compile that, and then we can have that discussion at our next meeting, our regular business meeting. Okay? Yeah, and I'm even thinking of kind of creating like a little board repository with some, you know, supporting documents and information that we get. Like the, the documents you sent us, mm -hmm. those are like supporting information, resources, resource information that as we collect it. When I send you the notes from the goal setting workshop from six years ago, that's kind of a resource, yeah. you know, some notes from something mm -hmm. that you can look on as background, well, things like that. Dr. Skinkis, would you be able to set up a SharePoint site that we could put every, just check things into a this SharePoint is, site? You could use this our Google, is Google Drive. Google, I'll okay. set it up. Okay. I'll have Mr. Fisher. That would be maybe the easiest way to do it. Okay. We'll, we'll probably have to use your school board account, so make sure, sure. your yes. school email account. But yes, we can have a shared folder for the Okay, board. that way no one's acting as the, the sign yeah, of the back and be, forth. That so let's great. do that. Yeah. Sure, you can put everything up there, and then everybody can view right. it on their own time. And that time. helps with document yeah. control, too. If you're making sure. an edit and then I'm making an edit, we're not. Well, in, in the way Drive is set up, you can look at revision history, so yeah. you can see who did what, when. Um, Absolutely. You can see who viewed what, when. It's really nice. Yeah. So if we could have that set up in the next few weeks, that would be very helpful, and then we can start putting information in there and then revisit this discussion and, and see what else we might need, and then... Your input, as always, will be will be very helpful. Uh, I am I, happy to reach out to the ISAB to see what they offer. I don't know. As we, had the, uh, we had the we had that young lady that did um, the. It's been two years almost. Was it Miss was doing the mission. She right. was starting to lead us a little bit on the goals, so mm -hmm. maybe she'd be able to come back if we. Mm -hmm. Did a yeah. separate meeting or an earlier meeting? Well, she's meeting. been replaced, right? There's someone. She's new. actually now the director for our West Cook. She was okay. the assistant. Yeah, she ran our Hall. workshop. Is yeah. right? Is it Nakia? Nakia Hall. Hall. No, Hall. Nakia is no. no longer there. She moved okay. on. So Sorry. it was the it was the yes, her was assistant director okay. or whatever is now the director. But yeah, she started to lead us a little bit in that right. app, that post mm -hmm. that post session a little bit. So maybe you can. And, and they would have the thorough notes from that they would. mission session meeting as well, which brings in the community input and brings in some other. Correct. They voices. have an executive summary pack. I yeah. can put that in that shared folder. That would be yeah. So I think a shared. I'm call, I keep calling it a shared doc. That's my 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 habit. But that'd be great. Um, and she's with ISAP, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I okay. Think that would be a good. Yeah, and, and I think, Ryan, to your question, this is not happening next week or the week after. No. But I want to make sure that yeah. we're not looking at 1231 of 21 going. That's what I was asking about the timeline if we're waiting for November 19th, which would have been after. Is no. is, I think, yeah. Um, my, okay. my, my sense is IASB is hard to schedule, but we could see if we can get them scheduled and uh, kind of move from there. Sure, as long as we have some sense of, yeah. of the agenda or right. the steps to go through so that yeah. we can have a discussion that. So I'm not going to take up any more time on the, the, the C or the D. I think they kind of nest in that fairly, at yeah, least the communication strategies. One little 
caveat, if we even came up with a rough sketch, Ryan, it might be helpful to even take that rough sketch to the I, IIII conference. And as you are talking and interacting with other board members, you can kind of have that conversation then too. Sure. Yeah, or maybe there's some sessions, you know? So that way it would help reform or enlighten what we think we had too. So it might not be a bad idea if we had one meeting before that conference. In regards oh, to sure. the communication yeah. strategies, yeah. I know we, they tied into, you said, uh, B with the mm -hmm. district goal saying, we have made a, a concentrated effort as a, the high school and at the district level to use Instagram and Facebook more with shorter messages and we have received some positive feedback mm -hmm. from parents that they're getting things faster students I don't know you would know better but I mean we've, we've been trying to send out regular updates through Instagram and Facebook uh, as well as obviously the website and emails but the feedback we were getting was parents use the Facebook and the students use the Instagram well I think so. one of the challenges too is that from the family parent perspective is that mm -hmm. things were not always happening in a timely fashion and they would be coming from kind of uh, some disparate everything looked a little bit different so I think there's been a lot more uniformity applied this school year right so um, whoever's taking the lead on that I, I really appreciate it. I think it's been much easier at the, on the from the parent perspective to see what's coming through but I'm not sure do you guys have you noticed a difference or any any suggestions I think it's still working great because Instagram definitely is the kids looking at them Facebook or parents or sometimes overlap but I think it works really well for and, and where's Twitter fall on this continuum I Twitter. don't use Twitter. I don't know many people. Off, I is it? I think it I don't think people really use Twitter, and if they do, it's not in that way. Mm -hmm. I personally can't speak on that, but I don't know that Twitter would be a good use of effort to like get the message out. Ms. Molo, the uh, principal secretary, uh, has been assisting us. So, like when we have something go on, uh, we have her send it out right away on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Well, so we've could... been trying to shorten those slides even on the web page. Use that same short slide from the web page or the news announcement on the web page, and doing it to using that same text, same format to those three places: web page, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, and it's nice because Instagram you. and Facebook are owned by the same company, right? So the business tool will post everything for you in one fell swoop. Correct. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Skinkies, do you want to talk about out of well, state? Well, yes, I asked, uh, I asked that this be put on the agenda. Uh, we are getting some requests for out-of-state field trips and overnight field trips um, and educational tours, as they're called, where they're not directly related to the content of the class, but, you know, uh, a ski club going to Wisconsin over winter break or in February, um, band maybe going to Nashville. Um, and so we're starting to receive some of these requests. And the, and the, uh, the supervisors of the clubs or the activities are, uh, are acknowledging, like, you know, with the current status of the country and the Delta variant and all the heated debates going on, like, will these be approved? And so before I brought these to the board, we had, we had a couple requests submitted last year and the board did not want anybody going out of state or overnight because of the uncertainty um, with COVID. And so, although we do have a vaccine now, we do have the entire country is on a, a travel alert because the entire country is in substantial. Um, and so there are some things that uh, we need to take into consideration. And I wrote this in the, the Friday update, so I'm sure the board read that. It was a short two or three sentences, but I, I am all for, uh, you know, extra school, extracurricular activities. I think that's what kind of makes the student, completes the student experience. But at the same time, we really got to be th thoughtful of, like, are we going to put kids on a bus for three to four hours to go on a ski trip and come back? And are they going to be, you know, or what if somebody gets hurt on that ski trip? And are they going to be able to even get into a hospital in another state or in Wisconsin if... We're still at where we're at with the current numbers. Uh, same thing, you know, with the with the trip to Nashville. That that's a focal point for our band and music programs to highlight our kids and their experiences. But at the same time, are we going to put them on a on buses for eight hours or ten hours to go down to Tennessee in an un, in uncertain times? Now, logistically, you know, the, the the thing we can say is, hey, we're not in, in a position to bring these to the board, and for the board's not in a position to approve these at this time which I think is what we can do, we can wait, but there's some bigger ones that, you know, they kind of need some direction because 
they fundraise for three or four months. And um, so, you know, do we err on the side of caution uh, and, and hold the reins back and then we see, we re can we revisit this for some things after first semester or in another 60 days? Um, so that's where I need some direction from the board. Because uh, ultimately the board has to approve anything that's overnight, that's not a state series, uh, or anything that's out of state. What is the next one in planning that we would need to move forward in making a decision and or uh, giving guidance? Ski Club was the first, the one I know of, they had two that they submitted and Mr. Baum had submitted or at least sent an email inquiring about whether or not a trip to Nashville would be realistic. So what's the timing of both of those? And the ski trips would be in January, the February time frame? Ski trips are January, February. That, we, we, we have some time, I think, to hold on uh, because I don't think there's a lot of fundraising that goes into it. It's like, hey, you know, the board approves it in November or December. It's kind of like if you want to go skiing, it's $90. You know, it's, it's a set dollar amount. And uh, they reserve the bus and they go on a, on a weekend. Um, the Nashville one, Claire, do you know off the top of your head what, what the tentative Usually dates were? Usually that's in the spring. They haven't officially announced the trip or where we're going yet to many people, but that's usually in the spring, sometimes over spring break, but that is a huge fundraising effort yeah. for the whole band, but also for individual kids, because some people sell enough cheesecake and chocolate or whatever <laughs> to make their trip completely free. So right. that's something people like to get a jump and on. And when do you typically start selling, like around the holidays? Uh, now. Usually it would be now. Now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're behind. We're behind. Yeah. Because usually yeah. I would bring this stuff like the July, board meeting, August. well, the August meeting for sure. Um, and that's that's what I'm concerned about. Like I don't think where where we are at today. That it would, I, I, at least I, I would my recommendation would be to caution the board on. I don't think at today we could say what's where we're going to be at in spring to, to be taking out of state trips or you know. Um, 30, 60 days from now, you know, October, November, if numbers are up or down and vaccination rates are up and it's... Is there some basic, basic guidance that we can give or rather that can be requested of us with regard to what a stipulation might be in terms of uh, a, a number to hit, a, a metric that we would see whether it's in uh, um, various regional areas that in terms of the pandemic and or uh, vaccination rates of our students that would be involved um, so that we have an idea moving forward. Is there is there some metric that we would either be guided by to give guidance back and or uh, a discussion to begin that? When I look on the CDC website, everybody's in dark red except for California, and I don't know what territory that is. I They're all high, and California right. is substantial, right? Like, I won't pretend to be a doctor or understand where the where it's going to go, but that is now. We're talking sure. seven months from now, so you know, not knowing what's going to happen. Um, that's the that's crux what I mean. of it. Are we right? going to look for a metric to be able to give guidance in? A month well, or I think two months I think that's to the, begin. That's, that's the one thing that I'm trying to say is that like that chart changes regularly. So like okay, we could say an overnight trip to Nashville is okay if they're in the yellow or below yellow. Right. But if they get a spike, that could flip to red. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then we can't you know do how many do people lose their deposits or. I mean what what I'm I'm hearing you ask is if we are comfortable moving forward today with any of this planning for spring travel and I mean it doesn't, it doesn't sound like the administration is comfortable moving forward today I would say from a liability I would mm -hmm. just say like I don't think it's I, I work for the board but mm -hmm. if, if as your superintendent I would mm -hmm. be like hey I think we need to pump the brakes for another 30 days we mm -hmm. can visit it again in October you know and if we're in the same agree. place, I would yeah. say we get yeah. it to I, November. Yeah, I, I think we have to do that. I, I can't no. see in good conscience yeah. saying plan for Tennessee. Um, same. I, I mean, agree. As and, and much you as it can, breaks you my can heart. do something, you know, where mm -hmm. like if it's a state series, I mean, where it's in Illinois, um, most, you know, we could, I mean, there's a little more leverage. At least if it's in a state, we could tell parents, like, hey, you're, something happened with your student. You know, it's closer where it's not out of state or getting on a plane or anything of that nature. Um, 
No, and I think our, our student vaccination rate is very good. I mean, there was a lot of positives that are... Well, locally, in, in, we're in right. good shape, right? right. If it Correct. was in Neighborville, yay, let's go, right? right? But, like, if we had to go farther, that you know, then, then it's a yeah. little worrisome. So do you want to just keep this as a discussion item? There's nothing for action here, but... Yeah, it, it, I could just... I mean, this will, this will be a good reminder that every, mm -hmm. you know... I don't think we need to revisit it every two weeks. I would think we should revisit it every month. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so... If, the October business meeting for in the same place that we wait till the November right. business meeting. Well, and I think in a, in to, to um, where Ryan was going about, you know, other national metrics or judgments, I'm not sure if we have the ability to make that. No. And I, and, and, and I don't think you were saying that per se, but also I think um, these teachers planning this likely have a drop dead date where that's they need what to I know if it's well, going to say. And, right? and that's my question yeah. is right. for them to get started for fundraising yeah. but for the teachers to get the ball rolling on any of the plans is there an expectation that we need to see this come down to even begin mm -hmm. by by let's say our October uh, regular board meeting in order to even begin to say this is a good idea to plan and I'm sure they're already behind the ball as is mm -hmm. uh, it, being suggested. In my opinion I I think it's going to shake again. I don't have a crystal ball, but I think it's going to shake out where that drop dead date is going to come, and we're not going to be where we think we need to be. And no matter what happens, we're going to have to say no. And that's what I'm asking: is there a metric that we can say, you know, we we need to see it here before we can even begin the discussion to say that right. we would consider it? I don't know what that so, metric is, right? And, and I mean, if we're still in red in uh, yeah. November, the regular board meeting in November, I would guess that right. we're probably not going to be uh, having this discussion. You know, there. Well, yeah, the other thing that plays into this is like each is state is different, waves. right, in regards to vaccination sure. requirements and mass requirements, and so that's another thing. Right? Are we sending students into sure. <laughs> a place that doesn't think like us? Correct. Well, I, I mean, just yeah. I mean, everybody thinks differently, and so if I could give you an idea, kind of like what the tenure is around superintendents, um, and I think this has been the tenure of the board, and and, and I think this has been my tenure since last January when we started the. Like, the number one priority is kids in school on this campus and getting them back to their normal, right? So, like, although they may not be able to take this overnight trip, the fact that we're we'll be able to stay in person five days a week and be able to have marching band on the field or some outdoor concerts or things, um, mm -hmm. like, that's a priority. Like, if it's two years with no ski club, you know, I, you know, I, it's unfortunate, but I think... In the big scale of things, it's better to have kids in classes when they get back from the ski weekend than yeah, to have an outbreak, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. As a student, I think it's better to have someone say no than to like get your, I know I'm pursuing an independent like marching experience in the Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York, and New York has such strict requirements, it's going back and forth on whether that's actually going to happen. And you know, all this money's behind it, and then you get it back. And especially with something as large as like the band trips are, I think it's better just to have no expectation that it is actually going to happen than rather say yes now and then comes around spring and we can't do it. Right. And that's, that's a fair point. So I think we keep it on here. I think we don't, we need to know a couple of more deadline type driven answers. And if the answer is we've already missed the deadline and it's right. too late to start by the and, October and I meeting. Think that's that's my intent is yeah. at some point we're going to have to say you should go ahead with planning with the understanding there still might be a no mm -hmm. or make the statement the yeah. metrics aren't there to to make this a reality right. for this year and the focus is on in-person NRB right. not you know overnight trips yeah. right yeah and okay. I took a certification exam at work and there's already a gamma virus a virus identified in Brazil and South America so well you got cold and flu season coming up yeah so you're going to have, yeah. you know, and the other thing that I think, um, you know, just to remember is we have a lot of schools now, especially K-8 schools, that are using uh, weekly testing. And so if you're increasing the number of tests, you're going to just see an increase in cases, you know, and some of that's going to drive numbers up uh, as well. So I, I think, I don't know if 30 days is going to be enough time for them to settle down to where we can start making those decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we. I think or, we've or it's easy to make the decisions. It's, right, <laughs> yeah. it's not improving. Okay. No, thanks for bringing. I think that's important to bring up. Right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I don't see any additional visitor statements. Any additional discussion items from anyone on the board? Anyone? Okay. Consent agenda action items. 
Shall I read the resolution? Please do. The Board of Education Township High School District 208 Cook County, Illinois takes the following action on the listed consent agenda items, approves minutes from the meeting held on August 10th and 24th, 2021, open and closed as presented in the September 14th, 2021 board agenda packet. Second. Second. Second, Mr. Van Hurst. Can we get a vote, please? Oh, this is all in favor. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 I apologize. Old business action items, life safety. Uh, no updates at this time. The railings have been completed. Uh, Kristen will schedule a facilities meeting once we uh, find our replacement for Mr. Jacobs to kind of summarize the uh, life safety work that was completed this summer and where we are uh, sure. on our final our tab sheet. Sounds good. And I think we move on to the final budget. Okay. Final budget FY 2022. Whereas the Board of Education of Township High School District Number 208, Cook, Count, uh, Cook County of Cook, State of Illinois, caused to be prepared in tentative form a budget, and the Secretary of this Board has made the same conveniently available to the public for inspection for at least 30 days prior to final action thereon. Whereas a public hearing was held as to such budget on the 14th day of September 2021, notice of said hearing was giving, given at least 30 days prior thereto as required by law and all other legal requirements have been complied with. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education of said district as follows. Section 1, that the fiscal year of this school district be and the same hereby is fixed and declared to be beginning July 1, 2021 and end June 30, 2022. Section 2, that the following budget containing an estimate of amounts available in each fund separately and of expenditures from each be and the same is hereby adopted as the budget of this school district for said fiscal year. Can we have a second? Second. Second, Ms. Gaska. Ms. Nardi, would you take the roll, please? Ms. Ruska? Yes. Ms. Towner? Yes. Mr. Dunhorst? Yes. Ms. Gaska? Yes. And Ms. Sage? Yes. Thank, thank you. you. And I thank yes. you, Dr. Thank Smith, you for all of your work on this. I know this is a, it's a project and undertaking, and it is very much appreciated. So yes. thank you. And everyone else who contributes. I don't mean to limit it. Uh, moving on to new business, payment of bills. Uh, there were no questions submitted on any of the bills, so uh, person, nothing to highlight? No. Nope. Okay. The Board of Education Township High School District 208, Cook County, Illinois, approves the payment of bills as presented in the September 14th, 2021 Board Agenda Packet. Second, Can please. We a second. I will second that. Thank you. Ms. Towner? Yes. Mr. Ben Horst? Yes. Ms. Gaska? Yes. Ms. Ruska? Yes. Yes. Moving on to student zoo parking lot. So this is something that's um, been in place even long before I got here. Uh, when the zoo traffic slows down uh, near the end of September, uh, they allow you know a certain number of spaces in the south lot right off of a golf road here. Uh, they sell, we do a, like an intergovernmental agreement or this little contract so that students can park from like October to March uh, until the busy season starts back up around spring break. Um, it's been quite some time since we kind of reviewed the terms of that agreement. And so Kristen just wanted to uh, reestablish some things since we have a new liability insurance carrier, we wanted to make sure they were aware of it and didn't want anything specific placed in the agreement. So uh, that's why this has been revised and is in front of you tonight. Kristen, am I missing any? We, we have reviewed it with legal counsel, correct? Correct. Um, is there anything else I'm missing? No. Nope. So, so quick question. There's obviously a provision in here um, to to issue a refund in case of, you know, feast or famine. Did that was that exercised last year or is that new language? Um, that is new language uh, okay. that uh, our our legal counsel asked to. Okay. Good. Yeah. And then my other question is: This the right signatory from the zoo? I just think it's interesting that that is what they sent over to us. Okay, this is this initiated from them. Yes. 
Because last year, I don't, I don't, uh, sorry, also last year, I don't think we ever initiated this process with issuing student parking in the zoo, so there were no refunds. Because we were, uh, we were shut, okay. We, were, we went to oh, that makes remote, sense. Right, remote before October. Okay, that makes sense. Um, nobody was driving, to, nobody was at school, so nobody right. was driving to school, right? Right. Yes, I, I don't have any other questions. Any questions from anyone on this? No. It, it was cost, the cost is on the students for the It's cost to the nothing. district, correct. Right. So. Um, okay, go ahead. The Board of Education Township High School mm -hmm. District 208, Cook County, Illinois, hereby approves the contract with the Chicago Zoological Society as presented in the September 14th, 2021 board agenda packet. Can we have a second, please? Second. Second, Ms. Gasco. And a roll call. Yes. Yes. Ms. Yes. Ms. Yes. Ms. Yes. Can we take these next two together or are they they're separate actions? Or can you talk about them both at the same time? I, I think they're just activity accounts for yeah. both clubs, correct, Kristen? Correct. And the board has to take formal action just to establish it. So I'm wondering, Ramona, if you could read the uh, the same sure. I'll preface just part stick, and then yes. just drop in both names. Sure. Okay. Board of Education Township High School District 208, Cook County, Illinois, hereby approves the activity accounts for Girl Up and Helping Paws as presented in the September 14th, 2021 board agenda packet. Second. A, Laura Ruska is a second. And any discussion? Questions? Can we get a roll call, please? Yes. 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 Moving on, um, we don't have any additional discussion items for this, excuse me, visitor statements nor discussion items. Any consideration of items for future meetings from anyone? And we will move on to matters for closed session. I mean, just the goal setting, right? Right. That's, that remains yeah. on. Right. All right, that's on the front part. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Board of Education, Township High School, District 208, Cook County, Illinois, enters closed session for the purpose of considering appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body, student discipline, purchase, sale, or lease of real property, probable, imminent, or pending litigation, collective negotiation, school safety, and school board vacancy. Can we get a second, please? I will second. Thank you. Holy moly, 745. Okay. Second by Mr. Van Hurst. <laughs> and a roll call for closed session, please. Ms. Ruska? Yes. Ms. Towner? Yes. Mr. Van Yes. Ms. Gaspa? Yes. Yes. Okay. Woohoo.